Another feature that I want to point out with the lasso tools and with the marquee tools is the ability to add to or take away from your selection. With both sets of tools, if I zoom here in here on my tomato, let's say that I wanted to add this tomato as well. If I hold the shift key down, you notice that a plus sign appears next to the polygonal lasso tool and I can just start clicking around this tomato. And it adds to the selection. Okay. Let's say that I want to remove, for whatever reason, a square from the middle of the selection that we currently have. If I hold down the Alt key or the on a Mac, the Option key, you'll notice that it turns into a minus. And then I can just draw a rectangle or a square. If I hold the Shift key down and the Option key or the Alt key, it restricts the proportion to a square. Or if we're using the elliptical marquee tool, it would restrict it to a circle. And then whenever I release my mouse, it's now removed from the selection and you'll notice that with my mouse over the non-selected area that we just created it looks like a normal pointer in this case if I move it over top of the tomato that's still selected you'll notice that it's telling you that it's selected by changing the the cursor okay the other option that I want to point out here, in addition to adding and subtracting from your selection, is there's a number of tools that work together with selections, and it's under the Selects menu bar here. And you'll notice that if I come down to Modify, we have a number of options. One is Border, which we'll look at later. We have Smooth expand, contract, and feather. Smooth basically takes the existing selection that you have and it smooths it out. So like if you were creating a selection using the polygon or lasso tool, it may not be perfectly smooth and round because you know, you're clicking the little point. So you can select a, a sample radius of say three and it'll take the selection that you have and average it. Now you're not going to see a lot of difference in this selection here, but essentially that's what it does. Now, if you use expand, expand does what you think it would do. So like, let's say that I want to select this tomato, but I want to broaden the selection by say five pixels for whatever reason. Expand selection can come in handy if you're creating say circles within circles or something like that, then it's a very obvious option. But in this case, if I choose expand by five pixels and click OK, watch what happens. You'll notice that there was a slight adjustment that happened where the selection that we had grew by five pixels on every direction. And then of course, the contract does the exact opposite. It contracts it by five. So if I put in say 15, or contracts it by whatever number of pixels we select. So if I say contract by 15 pixels and click OK, it reduces the selection area by 15 pixels on every side. And the last option that we have under Modify is Feather. And what Feather does is it takes your selection and it smooths it out depending on the radius that you choose. So like for instance, if I just choose a radius of one or two, the, the edge is gonna be very subtle. Instead of it being a very clean, sharp edge, it'll have a little bit of softness to it. And actually, let me demonstrate this to you. Let's take a copy of the tomato, and as is, without any feathering, and paste it onto a new layer. And so you can see that it's a very hard edge. If we zoom in here, you'll notice that it's a very hard edge, okay? If I load that selection again and come up to select, modify, feather, and say we put in a, a feather radius, something that's small, like two, click OK. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna copy the tomato and paste it. So now if you look at the edge, 
you notice that it's just a little bit softer. Compare that to the original one. See how it's very hard, very clear defined edge versus the new one that has a very soft edge. Now if we take it one step further, I'm going to make this selection again and we're going to turn on the tomatoes and this time instead of feathering the selection to 2, we're going to feather it to 10. We'll click OK and then I'm going to copy and paste again and now you'll notice that the edge is very soft. So it depends on what you're working on and wanting to select. Very often if I'm pulling an object out of a photograph like we're doing in this particular case, I usually feather every selection at least one or two pixels. It just removes that harshness of the edge. In some cases you may want that edge, but usually if you're working with photographs and trying to isolate something, feathering it just a little bit can make a bit of a difference. Okay, so you want to keep that in mind as you're working with your selection tools.